On this week's episode, Call of Duty gets slapped with the lawsuit. Nintendo's Banhammer might be a little too overpowered. Between the Panels makes its triumphant return. And finally, Disney is in talks to buy 20th Century Fox. And as an exclusive to the Nerf Report, we have actual footage of the cast of the current X-Men film the moment they heard this news. <laughs> All of this and much, much more on this week's episode of The Nerf Report. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Welcome to the Nerf Report. My name is Bryant Chappelle, and let's get straight into this week's news. This week marked the arrival of some huge news from a galaxy far, far away. And no, it is not more speculation towards the potential Raylo ship that seems to be taking the internet by storm. <laughs> On a conference call with investors, Disney CEO Bob Iger announced that Disney is in the process of making a brand new Star Wars trilogy. The new trilogy will move away from the Skywalker saga and tell a brand new Star Wars story. The trilogy will be written by The Last Jedi director Ryan Johnson, and in a statement from Disney they had this to say. Johnson will introduce new characters from a corner of the galaxy that Star Wars lore has never been explored. That's right, we are getting new characters from a corner of the galaxy that has never been explored before. This gets me excited because Rogue One is my favorite Star Wars film in the modern day era of Star Wars films. Just because you have brand new characters, brand new stories, things that I have never heard or even thought of, and then when you got Force Awakens, it's like, oh yeah, here's a brand new character, Rey, Finn, Poe. But when it came to the story, when I was watching the movie, I was like, I, I just, I can't put my finger on it. I feel like I've seen this story somewhere else before. And as if Star Wars getting a brand new trilogy wasn't enough news for Star Wars fans like me, Bob Iger decided to announce that Star Wars was getting a live action TV show. That's right, on that exact same conference call, Bob Iger announced that Disney is in the early stages of production for a brand new live-action Star Wars TV show exclusively airing on Disney streaming service. The Disney live streaming platform will be home to tons of new shows. Shows including Monsters Incorporated, High School Musical, a brand new Marvel television show, and a Star Wars live-action television series. The service will also be receiving four to five original Disney movies exclusively airing on the service every year. Well, in other news, if you are a gamer, more specifically a PlayStation gamer, prepare to be rich. Well, figuratively speaking, that is. This week, Sony announced that its console achievement system trophies, which are rewarded to players for certain in-game achievements, could now be traded in for PlayStation credits. Credits that can be traded in for actual brand new games. PlayStation's trophy system currently offers silver, gold, and platinum trophies. 100 silver trophies will be worth 100 reward points. 25 gold trophies will be worth 250 reward points. And 10 platinum trophies will get you 1,000 reward points. Thus making the PlayStation Store the world's largest Chuck E. Cheese. I have 200 tickets. What can I get? I don't know, man. Like, some taffy? Oh, wow! PlayStation went on to explain that 1,000 reward points equates to about $10. So for a brand new game that usually costs about $60, which means you probably need to earn 60 platinum trophies or 600 gold trophies or 6,000 silver trophies. Just to buy a game. Every month, the Nerf Report likes to put the spotlight on a brand new comic that we feel deserves a little more attention. In a little segment that we like to call Between the Panels. Between the Panels. 
This month's Between the Panels Spotlight is Marvel's Master of Kung Fu, Volume 126. Written by CM Punk and illustrated by Dalibert Liege, we are told the story of Shang-Chi, the Master of Kung Fu, who first appeared in the Marvel Universe in 1973. Originally created by writer Steve Englehart and artist Jim Starlin, the Master of Kung Fu was created to answer America's demand for Kung Fu content in the 1970s. Shang-Chi is one of Marvel's few non-superhumans, with the mastery of Kung Fu and the ability to dodge bullets. The Master of Kung Fu himself has teamed up with Spider-Man, Captain America, and Black Widow, and has been a member of Marvel's X-Men, the Marvel Knights, and the Marvel Avengers. In Marvel's Master of Kung Fu Volume 126, we find Shang-Chi on his day off. But, like most heroes, their work is never truly over. When reading this comic, one of the first things to strike me was how closely the illustrations resembled a 1970s Kung Fu film. Artist Delibert Delige does a fantastic job making each panel feel nostalgic and completely different from anything that I've ever seen before. The writer, CM Punk, draws the reader in with his comedic attitude that shines through on every page. Punk's use of Shang-Chi's one-liners offers a sense of relatability to the story's hero, but also invests the audience into the future of Shang-Chi. Marvel's Master of Kung Fu Volume 126 was a fantastic read, and if you find yourself tired of the same cut and dry superheroes and looking for something fresh and new, I highly recommend heading down to your local comic book store and picking it up today. I for one enjoyed this comic and look forward to seeing what Marvel has in store for the Master of Kung Fu. But of course, I want to know what you think. Let me know what you thought of the Master of Kung Fu in the comment sections down below. In other comic related news, we found out this week that Disney is in preliminary talks with 21st Century Fox about a potential buyout. According to an article on CNBC, 21st Century Fox has been holding talks to sell most of the company to Walt Disney Company leaving behind a media company tightly focused on news and sports, according to people familiar with the situation. The talks have taken place over the last few weeks, and there's no certainty they will lead to a deal. The two sides are not currently talking at this very moment, but given the on-again, off-again nature of the talks, they could be revisited. Disney would not purchase all of Fox, according to the people with knowledge of the talks. The company could not own two broadcast networks, and would therefore not buy the Fox broadcast network. It would not buy Fox sports programming assets in the belief that combining them with ESPN could be seen as anti-competitive from an antitrust standpoint. And it would not buy Fox News or Business Channel. Disney would also not purchase Fox local broadcasting affiliates, according to people familiar with the negotiations. In addition to the movie studios, TV production, and international assets such as Star and Sky, Disney would also add entertainment networks such as FX and National Geographics. Now, you're probably sitting at home thinking you said this was comic-related news. All you're talking about is antitrust and business mergers and entertainment news. But this is huge news for the world of comics. Disney owns Marvel. And currently, Marvel and Disney do not own the film rights for the X-Men or Fantastic Four. 21st Century Fox owns all of that. So if this merger or this buyout does come true, that means that X-Men and the Fantastic Four are finally coming home. In 1993, Marvel and 21st Century Fox struck a deal to sell the film rights for the X-Men and Fantastic Four. Since that day, 21st Century Fox has been creating a cinematic universe that lives outside of the current Avengers and Marvel Cinematic Universe. In other buyout news, Electronic Arts, otherwise known as EA, or as I like to call them, you greedy son of a bitch! announced this week that they have acquired video game studio Respawn Entertainment. Respawn Entertainment was founded in 2010 by Jason West and Vince Zampella, and their 2014 first-person shooter Titanfall quickly brought the company success. Under the agreement, EA will pay $151 million in cash and up to $164 million in long-term equity in the form of restricted stock units to employees, which will vest over four years. 
In addition, EA may be required to pay additional variable cash consideration that is contingent upon achievement of certain performance milestones relating to the development of future titles through the end of calendar 22. The additional consideration is limited to a maximum of $140 million. If you're a pro wrestling fan who lives in Ottawa, Canada, congratulations, you had the opportunity of a lifetime this week. Impact Pro Wrestling posted a casting call for this week's TV tapings. $50 a day for four hours of work just to be an audience member. Wait, you're gonna pay me? I don't think they know how this is supposed to work. According to a casting call posted on Smith's Casting Facebook page, Impact Pro Wrestling is looking for certain individuals. People that are willing to sit in the audience. Here we go. All ages, all ethnicities, bring friends and families. Applicants can work more than one day, so please mention if you're available to be hired for multiple days. Wardrobe, casual clothing, t-shirts, jeans, sweatshirts, weekend casual. You may be given signs to hold. You are encouraged to look at wrestlers on the website and make your own signs. That would be very helpful. And you will get more face time on TV. You will get to sit in the audience and watch a thrilling night of wrestling provided by Impact. Each day of filming will be four hours long. In a game where poning your enemies and teabagging is a form of hello, Call of Duty is being sued this week by a vehicle manufacturer over using a certain vehicle's likeness. AM General, which is the company that manufactures Humvees for the U.S. military, has filed a lawsuit against Activision in which they claim wrongfully leveraging the goodwill and reputation AM General has developed in these marks. Defendants have used and continue to use AM General's trademark and trade dress in advertising and promotion of their Call of Duty video game franchise. Have featured and continue to feature AM General's trademarks and vehicles bearing the distinctive elements of the AM General trade dress prominently in their video games and have caused and continue to cause the manufacture and sale of collateral toys and books to further derive wrongful profits from AM General's intellectual property and to further promote defendants infringing video games. Defendants video games have been successful but only at the expense of AM General and consumers who are deceived into believing that AM General licenses the game or is somehow connected with or involved in the creation of the game, defendants have reaped billions of dollars in revenue from their wrongful acts and in the process have irreparably harmed AM General by causing significant confusion, expressly misleading the consuming public and diluting the goodwill and reputation of AM General's famous marks. Yes, because who doesn't turn on a Call of Duty video game to drive a Humvee? I mean, that's like literally the only reason I ever buy Call of Duty is just the driving mechanics are top notch. Activision's most recent Call of Duty, Call of Duty World War II, has sold twice as many copies as the previous generation. In fact, in a statement from Activision, they announced that Call of Duty World War II opening day sales, that's one day, first day it arrives in the market, that they made more money than Thor and Wonder Woman did in their entire opening box office weekends combined. So how much is that? Well, Thor made $115 million in North America for its opening weekend, and Wonder Woman made $103.1 million on its opening weekend. So, going off of Activision's numbers, Call of Duty made more than $218 million in one day. So when you put it like that, it makes all the sense in the world why AM General is suing Call of Duty. In fact, their lawsuit continued on by saying, AM General's lawsuit is asking for the permanent injunction against Activision's use of the Humvee and related properties and marks, and of course, money. Compensatory, punitive, and enhanced of treble damages, plus attorney fees, interest, and whatever else the court deems just and proper. Ubisoft's video game For Honor introduced two brand new characters this week. In a new update called The Order and Havoc, the playable characters of Aramusha and the Shaman will be added to the game. Aramusha is a Ronin-like hybrid for the Samurai, and the Shaman is a lightning-fast assassin for the Vikings. And finally this week, Nintendo. 
Kind of thought we were done talking about this, but Nintendo is back in the news this week after receiving criticism for demonetizing YouTube videos. What's different this time? Well, the launch of Super Mario Odyssey. The release of Super Mario Odyssey, gamers around the world said, you know what? I got a great idea. I'm going to make a Let's Play for Super Mario Odyssey. Even though Nintendo said that they're going to demonetize it, they won't because they're cool now. Because at the end of the day, Nintendo seems all cool with the brand new games and the Switch, and it's like, yeah, we're cool again. But then they demonetize the videos. I mean, they're really like that villain in the old vaudeville films. You'll never monetize your videos, you see? Well, this week, a YouTuber by the name of Video Game Donkey posted the following tweet after his review for Super Mario Odyssey got demonetized. This tweet was followed by outrage from another fellow YouTuber, Boogie2988, who in the past has not been a stranger for criticizing Nintendo when it comes to the partner program. In a tweet, Boogie wrote, It breaks my heart knowing that I will have two Nintendo games in my top 10 list this year, and I can't include even screenshots of the game. When a fan asked Boogie the question, Did you sign an NDA or a non-disclosure agreement? Boogie had this to say, Nope, because Nintendo will copyright your video for the smallest thing and take all of your income from your hard work. To which one fan responded to Boogie by saying, just post the video anyway, and Boogie responded by saying, pay Nintendo for the right to promote their games? No, not when I have other companies paying me for the same privilege. Now, I am not a stranger when it comes to criticizing Nintendo, but I have to say, this program exists because Nintendo knows it can. But unfortunately, the best way to solve this problem is one that many content creators and YouTubers do not want to agree with. Nintendo has the partner program because they know it can exist. They know that people love their games. And if you truly want to play their games and you want to post videos of it, you're going to play within their rules. Well, my solution to that is stop buying their products. Stop buying the Switch. Stop buying games. If you already have bought the Switch and you already have bought the game, stop playing their games. Stop posting comments. Stop talking about them. Stop posting videos. Stop live streaming on Twitch. If you want to send a message to a company like Nintendo, it has to be a message that their wallets will feel first. Because when a company like Nintendo sees statistics that say they sell 463 copies of Super Mario Odyssey every minute, yeah, there's no problem with their partner program. They care about sales and that is it. But in the world of content creating, I understand that that is a lot easier said than done. So I will lead the charge. And I implore fellow YouTubers like Boogie2988 and Video Game Donkey to follow along and encourage their viewers to do the same. The Nerf Report is a news organization and we are covered under fair use. But that doesn't mean that I am not terrified when I cover Nintendo because I'm worried that Nintendo is going to demonetize my entire 15 minute video for a 12 second clip of their trailer. So moving forward, you will not see any Nintendo trailers. You will see no Nintendo gameplay. In its place, you will see this. Dum 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 dum. Here we go. Dum 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 Oh, so long, governor. Oh, you want to fight BB-8? Wahoo! I am the greatest. Oh, son of a bitch. That is it for this week's episode of the Nerf Report. If you liked what you saw, make sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, but more importantly, please share it with your friends. As always, my name is Bryant Chappelle. You are you, and this has been the Nerf Report. Thanks for watching.